Welcome to this IBM AIX to Oracle Solaris Migration Fundamentals Training. If you're a technical IT manager, IT architect or system administrator, this training is for you. Over the next half hour, you'll gain an understanding of the fundamental requirements for migrating from AIX to Oracle Solaris. See how the key operating system technologies and tools in AIX map into Solaris, as well as discover the key Solaris technologies that are not found in AIX. As such, this presentation will be the starting point in planning your overall migration. We've assumed that you're familiar with AIX but have limited or no familiarity with Oracle Solaris. AIX and Oracle Solaris are both based on Unix System 5, so the transition to Oracle servers running Solaris 11 isn't a difficult one. However, migrating to any new platform takes time and effort, particularly if the tools and technologies used on the new system are unfamiliar. Database migration is an important piece of the migration story. We'll touch on the database migration tools in this training module, but detailed database migration will be covered separately. Once you've completed this training module, you'll be able to find more detailed information on various subjects in the Oracle Learning Library and will provide you links to key resources. In addition, look out for future library content covering specific topics as we have more content planned. To get you started with migration from AIX to Oracle Solaris, this training module covers software installation and management, data and file systems where we touch on database migration, the various options for virtualization, tools for assuring the availability of systems, applications and services, the all-important topic of security, a brief look at scripting, before finishing by providing you with some suggestions for further reading and training to take you deeper on these subjects. The good news is that AIX and Oracle Solaris have similar concepts for software installation and management, but the tools you need to use are different. AIX and Solaris provide similar options for installing a new instance on a single system using distributed media or network installations. While AIX and Oracle Solaris also support automated installation of multiple systems, the tools are different. AIX uses Network Installation Manager, NIM, whereas Oracle Solaris 11 uses Automated Installer to provide similar functionality. Automated Installer automates and batches installations based on customized or standardized system profiles, enabling unsupervised installation of multiple systems in large-scale environments. Jumpstart support is also provided in Oracle Solaris offering a way for you to host existing Jumpstart environments on top of Oracle Solaris 11. In addition, Oracle Enterprise Manager Ops Center, included in all Oracle Premier Support Agreements, can be used to manage multiple systems through a web interface. So, in moving from AIX to Oracle, you will replace Network Installation Manager with Solaris Automated Installer. When it comes to software installation and management, Oracle Solaris 11 uses the Image Packaging System as its software packaging model. Image Packaging System provides software management functionality that's similar to RPM repositories or NIM-based collections of file sets on AIX. Image Packaging System handles the entire software lifecycle, including installation, patching, upgrades and removal through the command line and a GUI interface. Let's look at Image Packaging System more closely. During installation, Image Packaging System performs automatic dependency checks and adds any additional packages and libraries that are required, which simplifies the installation. A snapshot of the system is taken before each package installation. This provides two advantages. First, it ensures that the system is always in a valid state, and second, it enables a rollback in the event that a package installation fails. Perhaps the biggest advantage in using Image Packaging System is that it eliminates patching because the Image Packaging System software packaging model releases updated software packages that are already integration tested before they are made available for download and installation, removing the need for manual analysis to determine patch interdependencies. Another key advantage of Image Packaging System is that it provides safe rollback. So if a system reboot is required after an update, Image Packaging System creates a ZFS file system boot environment that you can boot into. Should an update fail, you can reboot back into the older boot environment, providing for fail-safe system updates. This can make change management and system updating much easier for you. To install software, AIX uses System Management Interface Tool SMIT. This is similar to using the Image Packaging System Package Install command. Also, AIX uses Service Update Management Assistant to update software. This is similar to using the Image Packaging System Package Update command. Moving on to boot environments. In AIX, you use FixCentral, Suma, NIM and SMIT to load entire service packs. 
It's a recommended best practice in AIX to perform system backups before updating a system, which can be time consuming. But of course, you could choose to create an alt disk install to minimize downtime. In contrast, Oracle Solaris uses boot environments. These boot environments take advantage of the built-in Oracle Solaris ZFS file technology. This means that you can create a snapshot quickly and use its cloning capabilities to replicate the active operating system. Note that cloning a file system takes seconds, even for large disk arrays. The ability to quickly clone the system eliminates the need to manually back up the system before creating a new boot environment. By default, a new boot environment is created automatically when certain system packages, such as key drivers and kernel components, are updated, or when you update all packages. This approach offers you the advantage of being able to easily roll back to previous boot environments if any problems occur. The Oracle Solaris BEADM BDEM utility is used to manage boot environments. Let's move on to looking at managing data and file systems. Moving data from AIX to Oracle Solaris cleanly and efficiently requires some knowledge of the target file systems so that you can determine how best to move data. In AIX, the most commonly used disk-based file systems are the IBM proprietary journaled file system, JFS, and enhanced journaled file system, JSF2. In Oracle Solaris 11, the default file system is Oracle Solaris Zetabyte file system, or ZFS. Some key features of Oracle Solaris ZFS you'll want to be aware of are that ZFS is a highly scalable 128-bit file system that lets you manage virtually unlimited amounts of data with individual files and systems able to scale up to 16 extra bytes. ZFS provides data integrity with no silent data corruption ever because ZFS's self-healing feature automatically repairs data corruption. All data is protected by a 256-bit checksum and data consistency is maintained at all times. ZFS has built-in data services including encryption, compression and deduplication, as well as providing for infinite snapshots, clones and replication across systems and sites. Unlike traditional file systems that require a separate volume manager, ZFS integrates volume management functions also. So, in moving from AIX to Oracle, you'll replace JFS and JFS2 with ZFS. Now let's look at the options you have for transferring your data to Oracle Solaris ZFS. As ZFS doesn't support the AIX file systems, you'll perform a data migration. There are two options available, Import and Export and Backup and Restore. In the Import Export option, it's typically most effective to use the ZFS Shadow Migration feature. First connect the systems, then on AIX make the source file system read-only and available over NFS. On the Oracle Solaris system, create an Oracle Solaris ZFS file system. If the source is an AIX encrypted file system, make sure that the ZFS target has encryption enabled. In addition, using a secure subnet is recommended as data isn't encrypted when sent through the network. Then, using Oracle Solaris ZFS shadow migration facilities, the directory structure of the source AIX file system is moved to the Oracle Solaris system, and data is copied in the background. You can use the shadow stack command to monitor progress if you wish. The advantage of this procedure is that the new ZFS file system can be used immediately. If users try to access a file that hasn't been migrated, the file is migrated immediately and made available. The other option, Backup Restore, requires compatible tools on both AIX and Solaris. You then simply backup the JFS file system on AIX and restore the data to an Oracle Solaris ZFS file system. But remember, unlike shadow migration, data will be offline throughout the process. Having touched on Backup Restore as part of data migration, let's look at the options you have once your data is on Solaris. The good news is that many backup utilities, including CPIO, PAX and TAR, are common to both systems. In addition, a wide variety of third-party backup utilities, such as Tivoli Storage Manager, are available for AIX and Oracle Solaris. But do note that AIX-specific backup utilities, such as Backup, MakeSys and SysBack, aren't supported on Oracle Solaris. Another Oracle Solaris feature worth knowing about is ZFS Snapshots. A snapshot is a read-only copy of a ZFS file system or volume. Snapshots can be created almost instantaneously and initially consume no additional disk space in the storage pool. With snapshots, you can save the state of a file system at any particular point in time and recreate it on another machine to simplify data migration. The ZFS send and ZFS receive commands are used to send a snapshot to a file, file system or system. 
So in moving from AIX to Oracle, you can replace your AIX specific backup utilities with the ZFS send and ZFS receive commands to send a snapshot to a file, file system or system. If you have an Oracle database on your AIX system, you're well supported with a variety of Oracle tools and utilities available to help with migrating to your new system. The choice of tools depends on the size and complexity of your database. The tools available include Oracle Data Pump providing for fast data and metadata movement between Oracle databases. The Database Upgrade Assistant is a GUI based tool that performs all the necessary prerequisite checks and operations before upgrading specific database instances. The Transportable Table Spaces feature lets you copy a set of table spaces from one Oracle database to another. You can use Oracle RMAN to transport table spaces and entire databases between disparate platforms. Replication gives you the ability to share database objects and data at multiple databases. Another option is to create tables using SQL statements, such as Create Table as Select. Oracle Active Data Guard can be used to facilitate migrations from one platform to another with minimal downtime or risk. And the final option, Oracle Golden Gate, provides for real-time data integration and replication in heterogeneous IT environments. You can find more details on the migration tools and utilities in the Oracle database documentation provided or on the Oracle website. Both AIX and Oracle Solaris provide extensive and powerful virtualization functionality, both for host and network virtualization. Let's look at host virtualization first. Your Oracle Solaris platform provides a full range of virtualization options. Dynamic domains on Oracle's Spark M632 servers provides electrical isolation as well as logical isolation and employs highly redundant hardware. This type of hardware isolation is available to AIX only on IBM Z series hardware. Oracle VM server for Spark, which is purpose built for Oracle's Spark T series servers and Spark M632 servers, provides a full virtual machine that runs independent operating system instances. Like PowerVM, it uses a hypervisor that resides at the chipset level. Oracle Solaris zones are built into the operating system and can be used on Oracle's entire range of Spark and x86 processor-based servers. Zones provide simplified consolidation and high consolidation ratios. They also provide legacy operating system support so that, for example, you can create Oracle Solaris 10 environments on Oracle Solaris 11. When migrating from AIX to Oracle Solaris, there are two virtualization use cases you will most commonly employ, often in combination. If you used AIX logical partitions for isolation, such as separating your development and test environments from your production environment, you would now typically use Oracle VM Server for Spark, which were previously called Logical Domains or LDOMs. If you used logical partitions for consolidation, for example to improve workload efficiency and system utilization, you'll typically use Oracle Solaris zones now. An important thing to note is that in Oracle Solaris it's very common to use multiple virtualization options in a single deployment. For example, you might use Oracle VM Server for Spark to isolate multiple branded domains. You may even have some of these domains running Oracle Solaris 11, others on Oracle Solaris 10. Then, within each of these domains, you can set up multiple Oracle Solaris zones for consolidation. So in moving from AIX to Oracle, you will replace LPARs used for isolation with Oracle VM Server and LPARs used for consolidation with Solaris zones. For more detailed information on the various Oracle Solaris virtualization technologies, please see the manuals provided with your Oracle Solaris system or on the Oracle website. Now let's take a look at network virtualization. With Oracle Solaris, you aren't limited to virtualization of network interfaces only, as you are in AIX. Solaris virtualizes all aspects of network topography. This granularity of virtualizations means that you can aggregate and share resources to combine gigabit Ethernet connections to offer a single large network connection that provides greater bandwidth to applications. Conversely, use the basic building blocks of VNIX to carve up high bandwidth physical network connections so they can be used to share and enhance network utilization. Consolidate workloads by isolating and assigning limits or guarantees on the amount of bandwidth a server can use, you can improve network utilization and performance rates. This approach can be useful in supporting operating system virtualization, cloud computing and other consolidation efforts. Achieve high performance as control resides directly in the operating system. Layered functionality with heavy overhead is eliminated. Virtual stacks can be assigned their own priority and bandwidth on shared NICs without degrading performance. In addition, network workloads can be easily parallelized.
In Oracle Solaris, network virtualization is administered at a data link level. Once created, VNICs act and feel like physical NICs. Virtual switches are automatically created to properly route the network traffic to the physical NIC devices. VNICs can also be created over pseudo devices called Ether stubs rather than over physical NICs to create private virtual networks with full traffic isolation. Tenant aware application flows enable SLAs of shared network resources. While dynamic link multipathing and link aggregation provide resilience in the face of network changes. So in moving from AIX to Oracle, where you used to be able to virtualize networks at the interface only, you can now virtualize all aspects of the network. An important aspect of any system is its availability. Let's look at what Oracle Solaris has to offer. Oracle Solaris 11 has a strong background in providing the highest levels of availability. Both AIX and Oracle Solaris include tools for monitoring and managing systems and processes, as well as handling automatic failover, restart and recovery in the event of hardware and software failures. A key feature of the Oracle Solaris OS is that it includes an architecture for building and deploying systems and services that are capable of predictive self-healing. The service management facility and fault management architecture provide Oracle's self-healing capability, monitoring the operation system for faults, whether it's individual hardware components or systems or application services. These features then silently work to isolate any faults or automatically restart services, with the fault management architecture automatically diagnosing the underlying problem and responding by trying to take faulty components offline if needed. The service management facility provides similar functionality to SMIT in AIX and is used to configure and manage system services. The service management facility provides for tracking dependencies and the start order of services, automatically restarting services should a failure occur. In Oracle Solaris 11, support for legacy run control scripts is available for legacy applications. However, it's recommended to migrate to the service management facility to gain the advantage of automatic restart, failure detection and other useful features. The fault management architecture provides similar functionality to system fault management in AIX and handles fault detection, reporting and recovery. However, the Solaris version goes further than simple detection and reporting by diagnosing faults and initiating recovery measures that can help prevent outages. It does this by trying to configure problem components out of a system before a failure occurs. In the event of a failure, it initiates automatic recovery using the service management facility. In addition to service management facility and the fault management architecture, Oracle Solaris Cluster provides a high availability solution with similar functionality to IBM Power HA, formerly known as High Availability Cluster Multiprocessing, HACMP. It does this by having redundant nodes where one or more systems continue to ensure critical services run even if other systems fail. Nodes may be located within the same data center or on different continents. From a physical perspective, an Oracle cluster contains two or more nodes that work together to provide applications, system resources and data to users. No single hardware, software, storage or network failure can cause the cluster to fail. Loss of service is prevented through hardware redundancy, hardware and software failure detection and automatic recovery of services and application failover. In addition, a single management view enables the entire cluster to be managed as a single entity, reducing the risk of errors. Oracle Solaris clusters also support virtual clustering, allowing Oracle Solaris zones to function in the role of cluster nodes. Virtual clustering allows you to deploy multiple applications or multi-tier workloads on a single physical cluster configuration. Applications can run within a specific cluster under separate zone policy-based management. In the event of a zone failure, individual zones can be restarted or failed over. In this way, Oracle Solaris cluster can protect applications that run in Oracle Solaris zones. Oracle Solaris Cluster complements the Oracle Database for multi-tiered deployments, providing a single high availability and disaster recovery solution. This solution provides coordination facilities which offer faster failure discovery and recovery of services. For example, you can create dependencies between database components and underlying storage. It has load balancing capabilities and can restart mission critical applications in priority to less important applications. And you can get global disaster recovery capabilities with Oracle Solaris Cluster Global Edition. So in moving from AIX to Oracle, you once used IBM Power HA, you will now use Oracle Solaris Cluster. As a system administrator, you want high levels of visibility and control over your systems. To achieve this, Oracle offers an integrated set of tools in the Oracle Enterprise Manager product line. These tools provide end-to-end -end IT management that extends from applications to systems, virtual machines, software and storage for both Oracle Solaris and Linux. 
The family of Oracle Enterprise Manager products enables management of the entire Oracle stack. Rich monitoring features support proactive application and systems management across the infrastructure for both Oracle and non-Oracle components. Oracle Enterprise Manager Opera Center provides for basic hardware management, offering similar functionality to IBM System Director. It controls data center assets and simplifies physical and virtual server lifecycle management. Using this tool, you can gain insight into Oracle Server's storage and network components, including those on Oracle Solaris, Oracle VM Server, Linux, and Windows servers. The features at your fingertips include firmware, server status, energy use and operating systems, through to virtual machines, storage and network fabrics. Another tool available on Oracle Solaris 11 is the Dtrace facility. If you've used ProbeView on AIX, you'll find Dtrace offers you more features. Dtrace facilitates rapid identification of hung processes, bottlenecks and other performance issues that impact system availability. Designed to quickly identify the root cause of system performance problems, Dtrace combines over 100,000 trace points with a powerful scripting language and a simple interactive command line interface. It works by safely and dynamically instrumenting the running operating system kernel and applications with trace points known as probes that are completely passive until enabled. Probes can be enabled quickly for data collections and then disabled again to minimize the performance impact on the system being examined. Developers and administrators can use this information to quickly identify performance bottlenecks, optimize resource utilization and performance, and quantify resource requirements. So in moving from AIX to Oracle, you'll replace IBM System Director with Oracle Enterprise Manager Ops Center and ProbeView with Dtrace. When it comes to securing your digital assets, Oracle Solaris provides a comprehensive set of security features. These features offer a defense in depth approach by providing tools to protect hosts, networks and data. Let's start with role based access control, which AIX and Oracle Solaris use to provide fine grained privilege management. In Oracle Solaris, process rights management is implemented through a privilege mechanism. Granting only the least necessary privileges reduces the security risk compared to a user or process having full super user capabilities on the system. Privileges can be granted to a command, a user, a role, or a system. Many Oracle Solaris commands and daemons run with only those privileges that are required to perform their task. Oracle Solaris 11 has taken the additional step of removing the root account itself. When root privileges are needed, administrators must enter a password to assume root control. Both AIX 7 and Oracle Solaris 11 include trusted extensions, an installable option that provides a layer of security labeling technology that separates data security policies from data ownership. Access to data is controlled by special security tags or labels that enforce mandatory access control in addition to Unix permissions. As we mentioned when discussing data migration, AIX and Oracle Solaris 11 include support for on-disk encryption. AIX JSF2 supports per-file encryption. In Oracle Solaris ZFS, data is encrypted at the dataset level using the cryptographic framework built into the operating system. Applications that run on Oracle Spark T-series servers and use the cryptographic framework gain an additional benefit. Cryptographic operations are offloaded automatically to an on-chip cryptographic accelerator for improved performance. A key component in the Oracle Solaris Defense in Depth approach to security is extensive network security that protects physical and virtual systems and networks. This provides for security by default configuration. When Oracle Solaris is first installed, a large number of network services are disabled by default. For example, the only network service that accepts network requests is the SSHD daemon. All other network services are either disabled or configured to handle only local requests for greater network security. An integrated firewall, both AIX 7.1 and Oracle Solaris 11 include an integrated packet filtering firewall. In Oracle Solaris 11, the IP filter software is configured and managed using the service management facility for ease of configuration and automatic failure detection and restart capabilities. A secure shell, both AIX 7.1 and Oracle Solaris 11 include the secure shell, SSH, for secure remote login. In Oracle Solaris, the SSH utility is extended to allow the use of X509 certificates for authenticating users and hosts. This makes the use and administration of remote logons more straightforward and secure. Users don't need to populate authorization key files on each host or answer prompts to verify a host's authenticity. One final topic before we close, scripting. You write scripts to manage as many of your day-to-day -day tasks as practical. AIX and Oracle Solaris both provide the Quorm Shell 93. 
Most of your scripts will port to Solaris with minimal effort. The only changes you should need to make are related to the variations in script dialect. Many administrators also rely on Rex, another powerful scripting language developed by IBM. While Rex is not supported by Oracle, it's available as an open source and known to work well on Oracle Solaris. In this training module, you've been introduced to the key tools and techniques that will help you migrate from AIX to Oracle Solaris. You've seen an introduction to software installation and management, data and file systems where we touched on database migration, virtualization, assuring systems, applications and service availability, security and scripting. You can find much more on these subjects in the Oracle Learning Library and other Oracle resources. To get you further along, we recommend you look at the following. The Oracle Technology Network page on AIX migration for links to further information. The Oracle Solaris 11 for AIX users hands-on lab where you can download Oracle Solaris 11 and follow the hands-on lab guide to get familiar with the installation and configuration processes. Evaluate Oracle Solaris 11. This module includes spotlight articles on Oracle Solaris 11 technology and how-to articles, as well as handy resources such as cheat sheets, download links and transition migration guides. Evaluate Spark Service. This web page provides links to articles, demos, benchmark information and more on Oracle Spark servers. To visit these resources, please follow the hyperlinks in the video description. Links and resource recommendations in these materials will then guide you into more in-depth training content. Thank you for taking this AIX to Oracle Solaris Migration Fundamentals training module. We hope you found it useful and that it helps you implement your new Oracle Solaris system.